1998, the Mars Global Surveyor snaps photos of what appears to be a monolith on Phobos, one of the two moons that orbit the planet Mars. On the moon of Mars Phobos, there's a very, very interesting obelisk or monolith there. They call it the Phobos monolith. Buzz Aldrin, the second man to walk on the moon, made a really big deal out of this and basically claimed that it was artificial. And when we got there and studied it, it would change everything in terms of how we looked at our history. Is it really possible there is an obelisk on a moon of Mars, one that is not a natural occurrence, but was, in fact, put there by otherworldly beings? If so, might they have created similar structures on other planets and celestial bodies, perhaps even Earth, as some researchers suggest? Egypt has a number of obelisks in it, and those obelisks are four or 5,000 years old. And the obelisks in Ethiopia may be that old too. Obelisks, they're a piece of crystalline granite, and within the granite is quartz crystal. So obelisks themselves are, in a sense, a crystal tower with all of the properties that quartz crystal brings to technology. It's an antenna, and any antenna can receive a broadcast, and it can give a broadcast. And then we have these ancient obelisks that were at one point apparently all around the world. It would seem that there was a worldwide system similar to a wireless broadcasting system these obelisks would broadcast power into the atmosphere, and remote locations around the world could pick up that power, much like a radio today or a television set, a satellite phone, or a computer. This seems to be the system that was set up by extraterrestrials thousands of years ago on this planet. And incredibly, they didn't just do it on planet Earth, so we may well find that when we go to Mars, we'll find obelisks there. You have to realize that there is more than just the stones involved. There's a kind of energy field around them, and it works through the stones by way of their placement when put in a circle or in rows or standing singly. They would ground celestial energy, transmit it and download it into the local landscape. It was meant to be a kind of passive, continuous input to the Earth from the celestial and galactic realms. These sort of tall standing stones all around the world could easily have been part of some kind of energy grid around the planet, connecting up all these ancient cultures, connecting up the energies of the Earth all in different parts of the world, and somehow harnessing cosmic energy with Earth energy and used for various different purposes we're only just starting to understand today. This sort of megalithic landscape was designed to create higher nodes of awareness in multiple places. Their placement was specific to take advantage of implicit energy aspects and gradients in the landscape. The location of the stones is very important. For example, Stonehenge, we now know that those stones were positioned above the underground water flows. The water moves, generates energy, stones receive the energy and slowly release it. The ancient people, they would be around those monoliths, keeping their hands on the stones, receiving the energy. And if the stones were arranged in a pattern, it would create a kind of geometry of consciousness that would have uplifting effects on people who were in proximity to them. Throughout the world, whether they are stone spheres in Bosnia or megalithic monuments in Avebury, what we're seeing is that our ancestors are saying that these stones are able to hold energy, a soul, a spirit of our ancestors, of the gods. And so what we see throughout the world is these monoliths, because throughout the world we are trying to establish this link between us, mankind, and the world of the gods. Monoliths interconnected by design tapping into the energy of the Earth and serving as a beacon to link with celestial beings. Is it really possible that ancient monoliths hold an advanced, perhaps extraterrestrial power we have yet to realize? And if so, just what will happen 
when we unlock the mystery of the monoliths.